Okay, so after 456 deaths in about 15 hours, I feel like I'm ready to talk a little bit about Cuphead. It only takes a few minutes with the game to make its legacy pretty clear though. Cuphead will be primarily remembered for three things. Pushing the envelope in regards to the art and music that's possible from indie studios, being an example of how to make an homage to a retro genre work, and renewing conversations about difficulty in games. Put simply, Cuphead is a 1930s cartoon-themed version of Contra, assembled almost entirely out of multi-stage boss fights, with a handful of traditional scrolling levels. The story, based around collecting souls to repay a debt to the devil, is functional, but mostly irrelevant to the action. I think it's far more important to discuss just how well Cuphead nails movement and feedback mechanics. No amount of artistic beauty would save this game if its controls weren't fluid and fun. Thankfully, lots of work has gone into making sure that Cuphead is super responsive and precise. Collision detection never felt unfair to me, and evading attacks with tightly timed jumps and dashes felt naturally satisfying. The feedback from well-timed parries, achieved by pressing jump again in mid-air, reads clearly and feels rewarding. About a third of the boss fights in this game see Cuphead jumping into a plane for a scrolling bullet hell shooter experience, and these had some of the best arcade shooter controls I've experienced. Much like in Cuphead's best historical predecessors, these controls feel naturally balanced and timeless. Tight controls are undoubtedly necessary here, because Cuphead is hard. I wasn't exaggerating, I died close to 500 times before I completed it. Sometimes, rather than elation at defeating a boss, I just feel exhaustion and relief after so much frustration. Much of this frustration comes from the fact that bosses' attacks have to be learned initially through trial and error, and it's usually a decent slog to get back up to where you died, just so you can get a few more seconds to learn new attack patterns. I frequently found myself dying within seconds of reaching the last stage of a boss, because I rarely reached that point with enough HP to learn their attacks after taking hits. Also adding to the difficulty are random elements in most battles, like the placement of platforms in this hive, or the appearance of clouds with this dragon. It feels like you aren't so much memorising a string of patterns, but building up knowledge of a boss's tells, and getting better at managing the trajectories of multiple projectiles at once. If you're into that sort of thing, it feels like this game provides for a very deep level of reflex-based mastery. A statement from the developer on Cuphead's FAQ addressing the game's difficulty reads, Our aim is tough but fair. Cuphead may be challenging, but that's what makes victory feel that much more rewarding. We want to inspire players to master the variety of gameplay techniques available in Cuphead, so the challenge level becomes a means to an end. Cuphead has its roots in classic arcade-style games, games that really made you earn success. It's the type of game we grew up loving and something we wanted to recreate. Naturally, Cuphead has renewed conversations about whether it's appropriate for these sort of games to have easy modes, or to be more accessible for less experienced gamers. Frankly, I think having an easy mode shouldn't diminish the pride or sense of achievement you feel completing a game on a harder difficulty level. So when I see sentiments about how people should have to earn the opportunity to see the entirety of a game, it just feels like toxic gatekeeping. Not everybody has the time or the patience to devote themselves to mastering this game's systems, and that's fine. While the developer has every right to design the sort of game they want for the sort of people they want, it seems a shame that so many people who love the aesthetics of Cuphead will be put off by its steep difficulty curve. The game has three difficulty modes, one of them unlockable, but none of them could really be described as easy. Like I said, I don't think the developer is under any obligation here, and you could argue that walling off parts of the experience based off someone's skill is just how games in general work. But there's a lot of people that could have been pleasantly introduced to retro shooter mechanics, or even games in general, through an easier difficulty option. The difficulty in Cuphead is at least partially offset by a number of very welcome modern design decisions. At the end of every failed run, you're given a meter showing how far you made it through the battle and how many total stages each boss has. There aren't any cheap instant kills like falling into bottomless pits, and like many other heavily skill-based modern platformers like Bit Trip Runner or Super Meat Boy, restarting after a failed run is near instantaneous. Being able to get straight back into the action significantly helps to alleviate some of the frustration from dying. 
And there's also a pop-in pop-out co-op multiplayer mode, though it's debatable as to whether it really helps to play this with a friend. In battles where there's so much going on, another player can frequently just make things more visually crowded. Speaking of what's going on visually, it is hard to give a great enough compliment to Cuphead's graphics. These aren't just a basic emulation of 1930s aesthetics, the developers have gone out of their way to produce every frame of animation with meticulous attention to the processes and stylistic features of the era. Every character feels so unique and expressive, and there's a definite compulsion to get further in the game just to see the next lot of bosses animations. Even if you aren't interested in playing Cuphead, I recommend watching a playthrough. The depth and detail in the layered backgrounds is staggering, and I was never able to pay attention to those while I was actually playing. The soundtrack is also incredibly laudable. From honky-tonk ragtime to big band swing, from up-tempo Latin sambas to Disney-esque orchestral cues, immense care has been put into making every part of this soundtrack historically appropriate and beautifully polished. Driving big band riffs and rhythmically frenetic solos are the perfect accompaniment to Cuphead's hectic action. The composer, Christopher Madigan, comes from a background as a performer in numerous jazz and orchestral settings, and his lifetime of experience shines through in every track. Despite Cuphead's many positives, my feelings are a little bit mixed looking back on my time with it. I'm very glad I got to play it, and I'm going to remember it fondly. Artistically, it's an absolute landmark in video game history. However, it takes a certain sort of mindset to get into, and it definitely won't be for everyone. There were times where I really wasn't sure if I was going to complete it. This goddamn dragon comes to mind. But I'm glad that I saw it through. If you have a soft spot for the punishing gameplay of old school platformers, or you're willing to put up with hundreds of deaths to experience this sort of art firsthand, Cuphead is well worth checking out. Thanks for watching. If this is your first time to my channel, please consider subscribing to see more of these discussions in the future. I also make a whole bunch of covers of video game music, so if that's your thing, you can check that out with the cards on screen now. Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you soon.